so tonight we are going to make um, grilled chicken, pesto pasta, tortellini, whatever. See, and I just goofed that up. So at a show, if I do that, I'll just, you know, keep winging it. We're going to make pesto tortellini with grilled chicken. It is to die for. Um, so to start with, all I have in my rock crock is some cheese tortellini. It's just a package. It's like 19 ounce package of cheese tortellini. How many of you are familiar with the rock crock? Is there anyone that has seen the rock crock? Okay, a couple of y'all. How many of you are familiar with our deep covered baker, which is a piece of stoneware? Okay, a couple of you. All right, so let me just tell you the difference between the deep cover baker and the rock crop. I have always loved my deep cover baker. It is great, you can do tons of things. And then the rock crop came out about a year and a half ago. And I don't like change, so it took me a little while to start using it. But then I thought, well, let me just try the cinnamon rolls that I do four minutes in the microwave in my deep cover baker. Let me try those in the rock crock. And then I thought, well, let me try chicken fajitas that you can do 18 to 20 minutes in the microwave. And I noticed that they were a little more flavorful. So I thought, hmm, let me start using my rock crock and see what happens. The difference between our deep cover baker and our rock crock basically is versatility. So if you're someone that already has the deep cover baker, that is great. You can still keep using it. You're only going to use it in your microwave and your oven. You're not going to use soap to clean it. You're just going to use hot water. But you might be saying, well, then I don't need the rock crock. Well, you may want the rock crock because it's the one pot wonder. We call the deep cover baker the magic pot. Well, the rock crops are one pot wonder. This is the four quart Dutch oven. Then we also have, this is the daddy. We have a mommy that's a two and a half quart every day. And then they had a baby about six months ago and it's a two quart casserole. All three of them are great. Um, I have uses for all three of them. If I were to give you a suggestion, if you're only gonna get one, start with the biggest one because bigger is always better. You're always better to have more room to cook whatever you're cooking than not enough room. And then eventually you can add the rest of the family in as you go. Um, when, the reason I call it one pot wonder, I can use this on every cooking surface. You know, I can use it stovetop. I can use it broiler because it's heat safe to 725 degrees. I can use it in the oven. I can use it in the microwave. I can use it on the grill or the green egg, and then it's dishwasher safe. In other words, there's nowhere it can't go. If you don't have either product, the question you need to ask yourself is, where am I going to use this product? If your answer is microwave and oven, go with the deep cover baker. It's a little less expensive, and if you're not ever going to use it under the broiler, on the grill, you don't care that you don't use soap because it's stoneware, you're totally fine with the deep cover baker. Everything I do in my deep cover baker, I can do in my rock crock. Not everything I do in my rock crock can I do in the deep cover baker because I cannot use the deep cover baker on a hot eye on the stove top. It will pop in an instance because it's stone. It's natural clay. Um, I have people, you know, they'll turn and they'll say, oh my gosh, she's lost her mind. That thing's $139. She has absolutely lost her mind if she thinks I'm going to get that. Okay, well, you have three choices. You can order it tonight. Jennifer's going to love you because she's going to get credit for your order. <laughs> you can book a party off Jennifer. She's going to get credit for you booking. I'll come cook for you. The earliest date I have available is May 18th, so we can look at May or the first part of June. I'll come cook for you, and you can get it half price or free, or you can join my team and get it free and get paid to party like I do. So those are your choices. Now, the one thing I will tell you, you have to think of it as an investment. It's not that you're just blowing $139 you are going to be able to make all kinds of meals for your family. My family loves Mexican. For us, we're a family of five. For us to go to Mexican, we all get water. We might get cheese dip. It is easily $60. I can make chicken fajitas in 20 minutes in the microwave. Usually it's about 15 or $20. If I only made fajitas twice and never touched my rock crock again, it just paid for itself. Now the other things I can use my rock crock for, pasta, 16 minutes in the microwave with two cans of chicken broth. I can do boneless, skinless chicken breasts or chicken tenders, 12 to 15 minutes in the microwave for chicken casserole, chicken salad, anything like that. I can do chocolate molten lava cake, nine minutes in the microwave. Pillsbury cinnamon rolls, four minutes in the microwave. Um, all kinds of soups and stews and chilies. It comes with 10 recipes and then anyone that purchases one or hosts a party and gets it when they host, I emailed them 50 pages of recipes. So you have no excuse as to what to do with your raw crop. Um, the other thing I'll tell you is men are notorious for going to Home Depot and Lowe's and dropping $300 on drills and saws and all kinds of power tools without even thinking twice. If you're lucky, they might call you and tell you they're about to do that, but most of the time they're not. Whereas we as women will hesitate. These are our power tools for the kitchen. Invest in good quality tools now 
and you won't pay later. So many times we'll just go to Walmart and buy the skillet for, you know, $25. Well, in three months, six months, you're going to buy another skillet for $25. And before you know it, you could have bought some of our cookware that's lifetime warranty and stop spending extra money. So I haven't lost my mind when I say, you know, spend $139 on the rock crop. You simply have to think of investing in it and then create the habit of using it. You're going to call me up and say, okay, now I do have to host a party because i got to get the other two sizes, plus I need to get another large one because there's times we have company over and I'm making, you know, multiple meals or whatever, so I need more rock crops. I promise you will love it and you're going to be telling all your friends about it and they're going to love it. So any questions on the rock crop? Okay, so what I just did now, we're using our grill pan and press. I have three favorite products, the Rock Crop grill pan, grill pan and Press, and then my Large Round Stone in the Contemporary White. Those are my three must-haves. I love all the gadgets, but if I don't have those three products, there's very little I can do in the kitchen. You have to have the main vessel for any recipe that you're going to do. So for me, those are my three go-tos. So all I put in here, this was just a package of um, chicken tenders, and I put a little of our garlic and herb seasoning on it, the dipping seasoning on it, and we're just going to grill that while we're getting the pasta ready. Again, in here, we just have the tortellini. We're going to add a red bell pepper. I'm going to slice half of the bell pepper with my favorite knife and the other half with a simple slicer, just to show you variety. If you do not have a really good knife in your kitchen, every kitchen needs at least one really good knife. My favorite is the 5-inch Santuco knife. We also have the same blade in the green color-coded knives, and many times people say, well, what's the difference? The biggest difference is going to be quality. The green knives have a one-year warranty. They're cut out of a big sheet of metal on an assembly line. They'll last you more than a year, but they're not going to last you forever. These knives are individually stamped out of German steel, and they are lifetime warranty, meaning if anything happens to it other than the fact you throw it away, but if anything happens to it, if the tip breaks off, let's say it breaks off here, it is steel, but I mean, it has happened. It's full tang, meaning it runs from the top to the bottom, but if it snaps here, Pamper Chef will replace it for free. You just call them up, let them know that you know, it broke, and they'll replace it. So these are professional quality, whereas the green knives are you know, kind of, I think of them as if you have a second home or if you do a lot of tailgating, if you have a kid going off to college, it's great for that purpose, but it's not your knife you're going to have forever. Um, now, the proper way to hold a knife this size is to wrap your thumb on the blade and wrap around so that I'm going to control where the blade's going to go. The other thing you always want to do is make sure and create a flat surface. So even if I was slicing both halves of these with a knife, I still would have cut it in half and created a flat surface so it's stable. Uh, I am not Rachel Ray, so my method of slicing with this knife is to go down and pull back. If you are Rachel Ray, you can do the real quick, you know, I can't do that. I even was in Chicago a couple weeks ago, and I got picked to use the knives in front of the entire room. I'm surprised they didn't fire me. Luckily, they can't because I'm my own boss. I do not have professional knife skills. I'm just happy to keep all ten fingers, um, keep all of my fingernails and all that when I slice. Um, now, to care for any good quality knife, I don't care what brand it is, Hinkle, Cutco, William Sonoma, our knives, do not put them in the dishwasher. And a lot of times people are like, oh, not in the dishwasher. It takes me two seconds to run it under the faucet and wipe it off, and it's clean. You don't put it in the dishwasher. I don't know what you're what? You're making me nervous waving that around. Um, you don't put it in the dishwasher because I don't know what you're doing. Because it is too abrasive and it will dull the blade. Now, a lot of times the next question is, well, how do you sharpen it? Pamper Chef used to have knives that came in a self-sharpening case. How do you sharpen it? You take it to a professional cutlery store, Ace Hardware's. A lot of the Ace Hardware stores will sharpen knives. So you're going to take it somewhere where they do sharpen knives. If you are someone that does a lot of hunting and you sharpen your own knives, then you could easily sharpen it. Now, I will hone my knife, and I usually will hone it every couple weeks. And honing just means you straighten the blade. We sell a honing tool, and you just run it through there a couple times. I do it usually about every two or three weeks. And if the blade stays straight, it will stay sharp longer. Any questions on the rock crop, the grill pan, the knife? Any questions? Y'all are such good students. Okay, so let's do the other half of our bell pepper. 
with the Simple Slicer. We also sell a mandolin that's very similar to this, but it has four interchangeable blades. I love my mandolin, but I'll just be honest, most households, the Simple Slicer is going to be what you need. You just need something to save you time, slice your, you know, carrots, radishes, cucumbers, zucchini, squash, onions, tomatoes, any of that kind of stuff really, really quick. If you're anal and like it to be all the same thickness, you need the Simple Slicer because it'll slice everything the same thickness. It's got a lock setting. You always want to make sure it's stored in the lock setting. And then setting number one is really, really thin. Setting number two is a little bit thicker, and setting number three is the thickest. So pick whatever size you're wanting to slice, set the blade, make sure you use this piece and you know it's on there if you can physically hold it with it. This is what's gonna save your fingers. Then it has what look, looks like a little plunger. You're gonna use this to hold onto your food. Just like with the knife, anytime you're using this, create a flat surface. So if you were doing a potato, slice just the top of the potato off so it's flat. Um, same thing with your zucchini or squash or onion. Make sure there's a flat surface. Now, if you purchase this tonight, don't go. When yours comes in, don't practice with half of a bell pepper. You're going to get extremely frustrated. You're going to think I sold you the worst product ever. This is not real stable because it's hollow. Even if I had left it whole, it's still hollow, so it's not the best thing to practice with. Practice with a potato or um, a firm tomato. Don't practice with a really, really ripe tomato. Maybe zucchini or squash, something that's a little firmer because once you get the habit of how to use it, then you can slice anything. You can use it right-handed or left-handed, which I am not. You can do it directly over a bowl. So if you're doing salad, put it over the salad bowl and do your carrots, radishes, cucumbers, all that right over the bowl. Or you can do it on a cutting board because there's a little silicone feed on the bottom. So you just kind of hold, don't hold on to the plunger. Everybody wants to do this. Just kind of hold off to the side. And then as it goes down, I usually move a finger on the top and I'm not really pushing hard. Just do a little bit of light pressure. I think my bell pepper just went sideways in here. A little bit of light pressure to guide the food down. The reason you don't want to hold the plunger, because then you're going to prevent the food from just naturally gliding down. Okay, as soon as you're done, make sure and put it in lock setting. Just get in the habit of always locking it so that you don't get cut. This is dishwasher safe. I stick it on the top rack of my dishwasher, just all three pieces, then it's good to go the next time I need it. So think about this summer when you're drilling out and you have all that, um, all those tomatoes and onions that you need to slice up for the hamburgers, that'll get through them in a heartbeat. You also won't waste any of your tomato because you'll get all the way to the end. A lot of times if you're trying to slice it with a knife, it's kind of hard to get all the way to the end. All right, we're going to flip our chicken. And I had a little bit of garlic infused canola oil in the bottom of the grill pan when it was heating up. So that's all I'm cooking our chicken in. And you use the grilled press almost as a natural meat tenderizer. Just push down. The press itself is very, very heavy as well. So if you're doing burgers or steaks, you can put it on there, and it'll also kind of um, tenderize it. All right, now we're going to slice our zucchini. And I'm going to slice part of it with a fun little gadget called the spiral and slice. Um, again, when this came out, I thought it was dumb. I didn't understand why we needed a spiral and slice. Then I started using it, and I do really like it. It works two different ways. If you take the insert out, then it's going to spiral your potatoes, your zucchini, what, your onions, whatever. They're going to stay connected. Think about potatoes. You could spiral the potatoes, put them in a um, fry daddy, and you'd have one of those big plates of fried potatoes like you get at the fair. You, know, you can just act like it's healthy even though it's not. It's really good. Um, same thing with the apples. Spiral them, put a little cinnamon on it, and you know, bake the apples or something like that. Or if you put the insert in, then you're going to put your food on either side. So just cut it in half. You line this up, if I can line it up right. And you're just going to twist. And then it is going to do them in little half circles or little moons. Think about if you made a salad and you want your radishes, um, if you're making a homemade pizza. Um, I think you can do also, I mean, you could do your cucumbers, your radishes, you could do carrots in there. You do red onion. If you're making a homemade pizza, do red onion really, really thin. Really, I mean, just about anything you can think of, you could put down in there. You put chocolate, put um, big chunks of chocolate and do, you know, little chocolate shavings. This whole thing is dishwasher safe. So, again, when I get home, I'll put it in the dishwasher, just separate the pieces, put it in the dishwasher. 
and then it's good to go. It's pretty safe for your kids to help with because the blade's on the bottom, so as long as they don't touch the bottom, you know, help them load the food, they can sit there and help in the kitchen just twisting. Yes, ma'am? Can you adjust the thickness on no. that one like your other like one? You can't, except for if you put a little more pressure, sure. it might do it a little bit thicker. And if you notice, these are really pretty thin. Um, so you can't do it like the simple slasher, but you could change your pressure a little. Okay. So, Thank great you. question. All right, now this other half I'm just going to slice real quick because um, you don't have to slice all of it. Now, if you are making this recipe and your family does not like zucchini, then do the zucchini in the manual processor and disguise it. They'll just think it's like some Italian seasoning or something. I'm leaving it whole because you guys are physically seeing me put it in there so you guys can pick around it. I would encourage you to at least try the zucchini because it's very good. Um, but if you don't want to, you can pick around it. All right, how many of y'all use fresh garlic? Whoops. A few of you. Okay, we're going to make our homemade pesto for the pesto tortellini and we're going to add garlic to it. Um, if you don't use fresh garlic, I highly encourage you to start. I use two to four cloves in everything I cook except for my sweets. And when you buy garlic, this is the clove, the whole thing is a bulb, just store it in a little Ziploc bag in your spice drawer. Don't put it in your refrigerator because it will go bad quicker. Um, minced garlic will add a little more flavor. Garlic powder is a waste. Don't be wasting your money on garlic powder. You can put the whole bottle in your spaghetti sauce and you're not going to be able to tell a difference. Minced garlic will make a little bit of a difference, but with minced garlic, it has an expiration date on it. When it expires, please, please, please throw it away. Because when it expires, the preservative in it is very similar to formaldehyde. So you do not want to be eating that. So my gosh, I gotta check my that. garlic. Put a note on that. So buy oh fresh God. garlic, it's cheaper. Our garlic fresh, you'll see in a minute when I use it, you don't have to peel the garlic. So you're not gonna smell like garlic, and that's why most people don't use fresh garlic. All right, we're gonna use the manual food processor, or manuel as I like to call this. This is my sous chef. Um, how many of you have the food chopper? And the tray for that is the up and down. Okay, when this came out, we've now had this probably six years, six or seven years. When it came out, everyone in the room, when they announced it, gasped because they thought, oh my gosh, what's happening to our food chopper? We all love the food chopper. Well, we didn't replace the food chopper. We still have it. Again, it's a difference of versatility, just like the deep cover baker and the rock crop. The food chopper is great for just that one ingredient. You're just doing onions, you're just doing nuts, just chocolate, just bell pepper. You're not doing a whole lot of it. The manual processor is great for multiple ingredients at once, much bigger quantities, and the best thing is if you need to add liquid. In this, we're going to add some oil. You cannot add liquid to your food chopper without making an extreme mess. If you're making salsa, you can add your lemon or lime juice to this. You can't do that with the food chopper. This is a little more expensive, but what I tell people, if you don't have either of them, invest in what's more versatile. I have every product in the catalog and multiple of some of them, but that's not realistic for most kitchens. You're not going to have a place to store it. So pick things that are going to do multiple jobs for you instead of just one job, even if it means you're investing a little bit more. All right, so it's three, and all I have in here is some fresh basil that I just patted dry with paper towel. Um, there's a blade that just sits on a little peg, the bowl, and the lid. That's all there is to it. The blade and the bowl are dishwasher safe. The lid you want to hand wash and it even has a little sticker that reminds you. And that's simply because all your mechanics are in the top of the processor. So you just don't want soapy water staying in there and getting stuck. It's got a little silicone rim on the bottom so it's not going to slide around on your countertop when you're using it. You can use it right handed or left handed because your handle is offset. And I usually like to use the palm of my hand and you simply just pop. If you're left handed, Turn it around, put your right hand on here. So there's no excuse for anyone in your family to help because it can be right-handed or left-handed. Now my favorite thing about it is, who is the one controlling how fine or how coarse I'm chopping this basil? Mm -hmm. Me. Most electric processors, you put your tomatoes in there, or you put your onions in there, push the button, they're pureed in a heartbeat. Well, I didn't want tomato juice. I need to dice tomatoes for my salsa, or, you know, I didn't need onion soup, I need, or onion broth, I needed the diced onions. I'm controlling how fine or how coarse based on how many times I'm pumping it. Can I puree with this? Yes, I just have to pump longer. What are some things I can use this for? Homemade guacamole, fruit smoothies, um, baby food, egg salad, tuna salad, chicken salad, um, we're doing the pesto, really good, I mean, just about anything you can think of. You can go to the Is there anyone that wants to try it? That's fine. I'm just doing a workout. You know, all 
alternate and keep the muscles even. And if that works. All right, we're going to add a couple cloves of garlic. Check our chicken. My little burner is where it's either really hot or it's really not. Obviously, using the grill pan on your regular stove top will be a little more efficient. This is just my little burner from Publix. All right, so you put one clove in here. Do not peel it, and you simply crush. It has a Barbie comb or a little My Little Pony comb that comes with it. So you can scrape off the excess. You can also use it to dig out your peel. I like to just grab a paring knife because that's easier for me. But then you just dig out your peel. Like I said, two to four cloves of fresh garlic in everything you cook. Except for your sweets. You can also use the garlic press on ginger, nutmeg, or bouillon cubes. So let's say you're making homemade um, soup. You can put your bouillon cube in there and it'll crush your bouillon cube. And then when you're done with your garlic press, stick it in the dishwasher and it's good to go. So I didn't ever have to get garlic on my hands. Now let's say you do get garlic or onion on your hands. The way to get that smell off, grab a spoon out of your silverware tray, rub your hands on the spoon. If your sink is stainless, rub your hands on the sink and it'll chemically react and take the smell out. So you still don't have to smell like garlic even if you happen to touch the garlic peel. All right, we're gonna add some walnuts. With pesto, it either can be walnuts or pine nuts. I don't like pine nuts, so you guys are getting walnuts. <laughs> even though I'm not really eating this with you probably. We're gonna process this a little. because it is a lot stronger um, but it is really really good and our salt and pepper grinder is identical it's just depending on what you pour in it so they look identical so when you order the set don't call me up and say I got two of the same thing so I'm gonna tell you yes you did so you're gonna put pepper in one and salt in the other and you'll be able to tell because salt is white pepper is black and you'll know which one is which so it is identical because it will grind either one all right so we're gonna process this a little more your processor will also come with a lid that's similar to our um, prep bowl lids so if you wanted to store food in it you could take your blade for which i will show you in just a minute it's actually three blades at three different heights so that's how it chops everything even because the bottom blade kind of keeps throwing stuff up from the bottom and the other two chop at two different places if you wanted to store your food in here there's a lid that you can just store it in here put it in the refrigerator um, a tool that's great to go with this is your little mini mix and scraper it's perfect for getting in here getting stuff off the sides it kind of was made for the processor all right so we're going to add our pesto stir that around a little And then we are going to add, technically the recipe calls for four ounces of cream cheese. We're doing eight because there's no such thing as too much cheese. We're also going to add a can of chicken broth and we're going to add some Parmesan cheese. So you just get your block of cream cheese. I can open it. Do what? Yeah. And I usually just will chop this into... You know, like little squares. I just about cut my hand just then. That would not have been good. If I cut myself, Jennifer would finish the recipe for me. <laughs> that has happened in a show before. All right, and we're going to add one can of chicken broth. If you don't already have our Smith Edge can opener, this is another must have. Um, it does not have a blade that ever is going to puncture down into a can, so you don't have to worry about washing the tops of your cans when you come home from the grocery store. 
Um, I used to work in a grocery store, and I will tell you there are little creatures that live in the back room of every grocery store. Mm -hmm. So if you have a traditional can opener and you don't come home and wash the lid, then anything that was on the top, you just push down into your can. Also, if you open up pet food and then turn around and open up a can of green beans, you're going to cross-contaminate between the two. With this, there is no blade, so you don't have to worry about that. Also, from a safety standpoint, it cut below the rim, so both the lid and the can were um, smooth. So, all right, then we're going to add a little Parmesan cheese. All right, let's talk about fresh cheese versus pre-shredded. How many of y'all use pre-shredded cheese? I do. <laughs> okay, um, well, let me just tell you, my book bag is not working. What the heck? Here we go. Every kind of pre-shredded cheese, does not matter if it's Parmesan in the little green container, Parmesan in the deli section, um, cheddar, mozzarella, any kind of pre-shredded cheese has a preservative in it called cellulose, and the primary ingredient of cellulose is sawdust. So like, you know, wood fiber. It's a natural ingredient, so it's not gonna kill you, but you're paying for the convenience of that cheese being pre-shredded and then you're paying for that cellulose in there. Mm -hmm. Now that took me less than 30 seconds to shred the Parmesan cheese. And par fresh cheese of any kind always is going to have more flavor. It's going to melt easier. And it's not as expensive. So stop buying the pre-shredded. And the only way you're going to save money when you buy a pre-shredded cheese is you don't go down the fiber con aisle because you have enough fiber from the cellulose. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're, I'm going to put this in the microwave for 16 minutes, and we're going to play a fun little game. You can ask me some questions. It's for some prizes. Then we'll do a little door prize. You guys can finish shopping, eating, socializing, um, and everything else. Okay, you can stop it there. 